Hey friends, in this lesson, we'll look at session management. Session management in backend engineering is the process of keeping track of a user's interactions with a web or an app application over a period of time. So imagine you're at a library and the librarian gives you a special card when you enter. This card represents your session. As long as you have this card, you can check out books and the library knows you are in the library. If you leave the library and come back later with the same card, they recognize you and your previous interactions. So in web application, a session is like that library card or that unique, and it's a unique, that unique identifier for someone's uh, visit to the library. And session management is a process of now creating, maintaining, and using these session identifiers. Session management is important because of FAST. It allows the user to recognize users across multiple requests. Without it, every request to the server would be treated as if it came from one user or from a new user. Also, sessions are used to authenticate users. Once you log in, your session indicates that you're authorized to access certain resources. And lastly, it also helps in storing user-specific data like shopping cart contents for e-commerce apps or user preferences through their, throughout their visit. So this is how session management works um, in a very simple way. So when a user first visits a website or an app or logs in, the server generates a unique session ID, like the library card, and sends it to the user's browser, often as, and sends it to the user's uh, browser or the backend. So that's session creation. Then the server stores that session data on its end, often in a database or a memory cache, as a memory cache, or even a platform like Redis, as we had discussed in the previous lesson. This data can include user information, settings, or even items in a shopping cart. That's what we call session storage. Then in subsequent requests, the user's browser sends the session ID. The user's browser or app, the front end side, the user sends the session ID back to the server and the server uses this to identify or to retrieve uh, the user's session data. That's what we call session retrieval. And lastly, the sessions have a limited lifespan to enhance security. So when a session times out or the user logs out or remains inactive for a defined period of time, the session data is cleared and that's what we call session expiration. So with that cleared up, let's implement session management in our Datfrog backend application. So what we're going to do is create a repository that uh, handles session management and then we're going to see session we're going to see it in action when we're interacting with authentication in the next um, uh, lesson so inside here in our application we in our lib folder we had items and lists which are uh, our repository classes for our two main entities let's just create a folder here and call it repository and then just add these two yes and then now let's create a folder specific specifically for session and inside here we'll call it session repository dot dot There it is. So it's inside lib. We have defined a folder, created a folder that will hold all our repositories and then it's inside a folder called session. Great. So now let's work on our repository class. It's not as different as the other ones. It's quite, it's quite the same. So how we're going to define this repository is just the same as we have been doing in the lists and entity and items entities. So first we'll define a class called session. And this class will will extend the equitable class. If you've been here, you already understand what equitable is all about. Then let's define our variables. So we'll have 
the token then we'll have the user ID then we'll have um, date time and call it expiry date Then we'll have date time that represents when it was created. Great. Now let's define the constructor. So the constructor will be, it will hold required this dot token, required this dot user ID, required this dot expiry date and required this dot created so there we have it and then let's override or export this is a specific uh, method get method i get a method that's from equitable Let's define it, the variable that it needs to check. So I'll just paste token user ID, expiry date, and created at. Great. The next thing is, uh, let's see. Um, hmm. Missing documentation, constructor. Then this is the token, sessions token. The session token. This is the user ID. User's ID. When it will expire. and when it was created great so here is our class what else is need oh. so we'll just define this as a session class so we have our class that defines the, our object what our object should hold So let's proceed now and create our in-memory database as we did before. So we'll just define it as a map object string. Uh, and then we could, the value will be of type session. And let's call it session DB. Then up here, we're going to give it an annotation of visible for testing. Great, so we this is the one that's going to collect or have a collection of objects, session objects that we'll create. So now that we have that, let's proceed to create our repository class inside here. So we'll come here and say class session repository. And let's proceed to create some of the functions that we'll need, starting with create session. So we'll just define a function called create session. There we have it. First, let's add documentation to this. Create session. Great. Now we're going to handle, let's work on this function first. So we'll just set it as future session because after creating it we return a session object for that session that has been created and what we'll need here is the user id great now inside here let's do our logic so we'll first structure our session object 
so it will look something let's initialize it to a variable first session is equals to session so our token so for our token we'll generate it inside here by using the user id so how we'll do that is we'll just pick the user id that we can create a function that just does that generate user generate token so what we need is the user id so we'll return a string and then we're going to pass in the variable user id then we'll proceed to get the current time date time sorry by calling date time dot now and then we want to convert it to iso 8601 string and once we're done with that we're going to call our extension method hash value and this is what's going to encrypt it or set it to SHA-256 so now let's call this method and pass it here and then pass our user ID great next thing we need to do we have our user ID create so for expiry date it will be we'll set it to now dot date time dot now dot add by let's just say const duration so let's add a few hours like 24 hours okay so we have that and then created that created art will be date time dot now let's close that so here is our session we have created it now let's add it to our in-memory database uh, where are we so we are here so all we have to do is call the session db as in the session token and initialize that key with the session object and we're done then you just return this session because we don't need okay so we've just removed the future and just call the session because we're not doing much we're just defining an object setting it in the database and then returning the session right um missing documentation so there we have our create session we've defined another function called generate token so now let's define another variable where we want to get uh, we want to get the such a session of a specific token so to do that such of a particular token so that we know if that token actually exists so we'll just define a, var a function called session from token then inside here we're going we need this token itself passed as an argument then we'll proceed to so what's being returned is a session okay so let's define a variable called session and then we'll go and get it from our DB we just pick this DB and pass in the key token to get the session object and now we need to do a check if the session is not equal to null so that means it exists and if the session dot expiry date is after date time dot now 
So that means it's still valid. We return the session. Else we return null. And simple as that. So with these two functions, we'll be able to see how it works when we incorporate authentication in our that um, that frog backend application, which is the next uh, lesson. But I hope you have understood how to use it. Let's just add documentation here in memory uh, database. So with this, we're going to see, we're going to use it and we're going to do the usual where we inject the repository into our middleware and use it in our root handler that will focus on authentication implementation. See you on the next one.